the 7th day of September 2015. We have a big retransmission lined up. Ron Paul was on with us a few weeks ago. One of the most powerful interviews, probably the most powerful we've ever done. Alveda King on the abortion situation. Representative Matt Shea being attacked by the Southern Property Law Center and others. And, of course, Jim Mars in studio. That is all coming up. Uh, I will be filing special reports during this Monday live broadcast at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, but I'm giving the crew off the day to spend time with their families. All work and no play makes uh, Jack a super dumbed-down boy. But in the final equation, we have a scientific elite that has bad will towards humanity. They want to keep people in the dark. They want to keep us unmotivated and dumbed down and obsessed over simulated warfare and combat like the NFL and the NHL and NBA and all the rest of it. And I'm simply here to just say, look, this is what's going on. Here's their own statements. Here's their own admissions. What are you going to do about it? I mean, we've got the Pope and world government running around saying the West has to accept all these illegals that are refugees caused by re turning loose radical Islamicists. I mean, that's a report Kit Daniels has got coming up in about 15 seconds. But the biggest thing we can all do is just decide we're not submitting and spread the word and say no to globalists and vote with our, with our dollars before the cashless society comes fully into place. And what really matters is getting our souls in line. Here's this Kit Daniels report straight ahead, the full broadcast. Obama's Justice Department accused a Nebraska meatpacking plant of racism because the company dared to ask its employees for their legal status, despite the fact that feds have raided similar plants in the past for hiring illegal aliens. The DOJ claimed that Nebraska Beef, LTD, required non-U.S. citizens, but not their similarly situated U.S. citizens, to present specific documentary proof of their immigration status to verify their employment eligibility. With the feds breathing down its neck, the business, Nebraska Beef LTD, agreed to pay Uncle Sam a $200,000 civil penalty and establish an uncapped back pay fund to compensate individuals who lost wages because they couldn't prove they were in the country legally, the Judicial Watch reported. Additionally, the business will undergo compliance monitoring, which means Big Brother will be watching very closely. The head of the DOJ Civil Rights Division explains that the agency is on a mission to eliminate unnecessary and discriminatory barriers to employment so workers can support their family and contribute to the U.S. economy. You heard that right. The Justice Department is actually preventing uh, companies to fire employees because they're legal aliens. <laughs> this is completely ridiculous. I mean, back in 2006, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement raided se uh, several packing plants across six states and arrested 1,300 illegal aliens. Now, but what we see now is a complete contrast where we got the Justice Department creating this chilling effect to prevent companies from even questioning whether their employees are legal or not. Now, this is what I would call phase two of Obama's amnesty program. Now, phase one, which was started around 2013, was where we saw Obama tell the Border Patrol that they couldn't, uh, they needed to back off of enforcing immigration laws, which basically opened the border for illegal aliens and human traffickers and what have you. And when a lot of these illegal aliens crossed the border, they got detained by Border Patrol. And after uh, several weeks, Border Patrol actually bought them bus tickets to ship them wherever they wanted to go in the country. So let's say you had a legal alien that got to McAllen, you know, got detained in McAllen for like three weeks. So the Border Patrol actually took them to the bus station, bought them tickets to, say, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Denver, Wisconsin, wherever they wanted to go. And in exchange for the bus tickets, the illegal aliens were given these immigration court dates that they promised to appear to. But a lot of these court dates were like three or four years in advance, and 90% of the illegal aliens are not going to show up anyway. So now what we have is phase two, where the Obama administration is scaring companies away from even questioning the legal status of their employees. So once the illegal aliens get into the country and get settled in, get jobs, get families, what have you, then they don't even have to worry about ever getting deported because they're never going to risk losing their job. Once again, this is Kit Daniels with InfoWars.com. Joining us from his television studios in the great state of Texas, former congressman, medical doctor, veteran, Ron Paul joins us for the next 20 minutes or so. Institute for Peace and Prosperity .org is his powerful think tank website. He, of course, does his daily TV and radio show vignettes. And he's got a new book coming out, Swords into Plowshares. We'll obviously have him on as soon as that 
comes out. But more active, probably more effective now than anybody else in the world fighting collectivism. Uh, he'll go down in history undoubtedly as greater in the fight for liberty than even an Alexander Schultz and Eason, uh, a modern Thomas Jefferson. And he's a humble man, and he won't say those things about himself, and, and, and even the movement won't say those things, because libertarians are humble. Conservatives are humble. Patriots are humble. But we have to celebrate our leaders and celebrate that he was Dr. No 20-something years ago, never won anything, never got co-sponsors, and then by the time he left Congress, much of the Tea Party movement had adopted his Americana ideas. That said, former Congressman Ron Paul joins us. I want to cover the waterfront with him. Uh, first off, a few weeks ago, you put out an alert uh, saying that get ready for uh, serious crises in the stock market. Um, you uh, talked about problems in the bond market. You said a day of reckoning was coming. We're getting closer to the big event. In your own words, being a Von Mies Institute fellow, uh, you know, being on the banking committee, understanding the inside baseball, is the day of judgment for the Federal Reserve and other private central banks coming? Yeah, I think uh, for the not to come would be a surprise to me. And you've been involved in this a long time. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't know what was happening with the housing bubble. And we had the NASDAQ bubble. And uh, now, now we have other bubbles. We still have another stock market bubble, and there's another housing bubble going on. But the big bubble, I think, is in the bond bubble. It's been going on for 35 years, taking interest rates from 21% down to actually negative. And they've been getting away with it. So this means distortion. Not only is there money involved, but it distorted all the investment over these periods of time. And the biggest distortion that it encourages debt. It encourages debt for a lot of people, but in particular, government. And as long as our government uh, is able to print the reserve currency, it's going to limp along, even though our economy is limping along. But that will come to an end. And uh, right now we're starting to see the whole thing coming apart. I mean, we look at Detroit as an example. We see what's happening in Greece. They're worrying about what's going to happen, uh, you know, after Greece is recognized as actually totally bankrupt. There'll be other countries. This distortion has been going on for so long. Most people think that when governments print money, that the only thing that happens is that prices go up as a consequence of inflation. And a lot of that is true, and it's a serious problem and destroys the middle class and the poor. But to me, the bigger distortion is the lack of pricing for money and causing people to do dumb things. And that's why they overbuild and overinvest and governments overspend. And then you have the Keynesians still in charge that says, <clears throat> that says that the solution for this is just to spend more money and print more money, and that's coming to an end. <clears throat> the day of reckoning is, uh, is, is at hand. Undoubtedly, the day of reckoning came a long time ago for Greece and areas of Africa and Latin America. There seems to be this arrogant idea that it can't ever happen here. But if you look at the real numbers, uh, 0 0.2 growth, uh, that's what the Cook numbers uh, for most Americans, we've been in a very long recession. Yes, and, you know, even the figures that came out today on the employment, you know, unemployment down to 5.3 percent, uh, not recognizing or admitting, you know, that uh, 646,000 dropped out of the workforce. And we have more people, 93 million people unemployed and out of the workforce and that uh, if you look at full-time jobs, it's a disaster, even though they claim there were a lot of new jobs, but they were part-time jobs, so there's a few new jobs, and then they fudge the unemployment figures, but it's all, you know, in the system. And even the people who know these are fudge figures still play along because they know that the majority will play along, and they think there's another buck to be made, you know, in trading. But the markets are, are more powerful than the Fed and in governments, and markets will rule. Uh, a lot of a lot of people would always say, you know, uh, keep an eye on the Fed on what they're doing. But the Fed uh, needs to keep an eye on the market because the market eventually will take over. Just like uh, the market finally took over when they claimed that the dollar uh, was worth thirty five dollars, you know, an, an ounce. And, and that was not true. So the governments will lie to us. They'll get away with it for a long time. There will be an illusion and a false trust. And we will benefit tremendously because we have a military might. And because we have this privilege of issuing the reserve currency of the world. But, you know, the, um, 
the uh, obligations that we have, the unfunded obligation over $2 trillion, you know, $200 trillion, that is not going to be paid. And the only argument that goes on with these countries like in Greece and other is who's going to get stuck? And the bankers are worried they're going to get stuck, and that's what they argue about. But the debt will not be paid, and we cannot pay our debt. It's just a matter of time. But people say, well, tell me when, tell me when. Well, nobody knows the exact moment or the exact event. But you can tell when the foundation has eroded, and the foundation, not only of our economic system, but the world financial system, like no other time in history, has been eroded, and there's going to be serious problems because there will have to be a correction of this, and you can't correct it with more spending and more debt, which is what they're trying to do. And then we add the Puerto Rico situation, and then we've got thousands of counties that are on the edge or already bankrupt. We've got multiple states that fiscally are worse off than Greece. Um, I mean, the U.S. really is on the same debt path as Greece, and my concern is the bigger they are, the harder they fall. It seems like this bubble is so mega massive that when it does implode and we're so non-self-sufficient back when your parents, and I guess you as a young man, went through the Great Depression, people were much more resilient. Uh, now people are not agrarian. We were 90 percent rural, 10 percent urban. Now we're 90 percent urban, 10 percent rural. Uh, if we have a real depression in this country, uh, I just absolutely fear for my children. There's reason to be fearful because uh, the work ethic is not with us at all. Uh, people believe that uh, they are owed a living. People in, in Greece, you know, you sympathize with them to a degree because the banks have ripped off the system for so long. But that doesn't eliminate the responsibility of the individuals who have benefited from this. Free money, whether it's student aid or houses and these sort of things, it's 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 been there for a long time. And right now, there's many people in, in Greece who are really determined. They hate this austerity thing. Of course, I can't stand the idea that uh, the IMF is running the show or the European Union is running the show. It should be uh, should be liquidated. But they are retiring at the age of 56 at full benefits. And we have that same problem here. This is what brought uh, Detroit down. And uh, I imagine every state has problems, but the, unemploy the well, unemployment's a big problem, but it's the retirement funds. And our retirement system, our uh, you know, social security system is not solvent, nor is the medical care system. It sounds great. We're going to take care of you. It's an affordable care system. Well, you know, the medical system we're having shoved down our throats is unaffordable uh, care system. And uh, but the market will eventually rule and people will have to face up to their predicament. And right now, people are getting a little more nervous about the fact, you mean those poor people in Greece, uh, they, they went along with it, and now all they want to do is get 100 bucks out a month to live on, and the government has, you know, capital controls, how much money you can take out. Uh, that has never worked in the past. It just causes the, the uh, next country to uh, try to beat the system, so there'll be yes, other sir. countries including this country, people will try to get out of the system and maybe get their money out of the banks. Well, for me, that's what really shows us that we're getting close to the big event that you've been warning about coming closer, is that all over the West, elites are hoarding cash, holding gold, trying to restrict the public from doing it. Uh, the TSA announced uh, next year if the states don't have real ID, federally approved IDs, you won't be able to fly an internal passport uh, we now have, speaking of medical tyranny, forced inoculations uh, bill signed in California. Uh, we've got the Supreme Court now uh, mm -hmm. legislating from the bench, clearly. Uh, it seems like the bottom is falling out. Uh, a, do you agree with that? And then B, where does it go from here? Yeah. Well, yes, the bottom is falling out, and th th this is the, uh, the big problem because it's unsustainable, and uh, eventually that the, the people will have to, you know, recognize this and uh, something else has to change. Uh, the, uh, the system is not viable, but there's always this uh, willingness to try to pr prop it up like we did in 08 and 09. We, we propped it up, but the debt is illiquid. It's not worth anything. The sooner you liquidate the debt is better. You cannot preserve the debt. My argument is, and you alluded to this, is the fact that, 
you know, this is big problems for everybody and people are going to lose a lot of wealth and even some wealthy people are going to lose out. But uh, everybody